Hello and welcome to our Scribe Insight presentation, today featuring data integration for ERP. Our primary applications uh, focus today will be, in addition to Scribe Insight and our adapters, will be Microsoft Dynamics AX. My name is Richard Acey and I'm a pre-sales engineer here at Scribe Software. I believe at the conclusion of today's demo, you'll have a great feeling as to how Scribe Insight and our adapters are helping customers achieve greater value on their initial integration, initial application investments. So having said that, let's go ahead and take a look at the um, where Scribe Insight really fits from a component-based architecture. Now whether your requirements are simple, many, or complex integration, could be uh, integrations in the cloud, on-premise, uh, hosted applications, it all begins with the Scribe server, which is a small footprint piece of code that res resides on an existing application server, or uh, if you have a high volume transaction environment, you can certainly install that on a dedicated server. Now with the application, uh, there are two components, uh, the first being the Scribe workbench. Now the workbench is typically where the designer will go ahead and create the data maps, which pretty much dictate uh, how data is going to flow between a source and a target data store. That designer certainly would uh, behoove them to have some uh, credentials with regards to uh, the target applications, understand about the business rules, those types of things, certainly help them expedite the development of their uh, data maps within the workbench. Now multiple data maps uh, saved off uh, we, we call those a template uh, within our organization, and these templates are available uh, as free downloads. Some of the ones that we have created at Scribe Software made available from our website. Uh, for instance, the order to the invoice process. Uh, multiple data maps that may make up that uh, process. Uh, however, certainly downloadable and uh, open uh, with regards to making changes uh, to it to meet your specific requirements. Now, the second component of our uh, Scribe Insight Umbrella product is the console. Now, the console is where the management parameters are set with regards to the running of those workbench data maps. Now, these management parameters, uh, are, we, we support four types of process events within the application, and, and those being file, time, query, and queue. Uh, in our demonstration today, we'll be focusing on a file-based integration process uh, where we'll be picking up data that would uh, be deposited in a, uh, a Windows folder at some location. Uh, we'll automatically and transparently, unattendedly pick that data up and then migrate that into the target uh, data store. In addition to those four types of process events that we support within the Scribe console, uh, there's also monitors and alerts. Uh, monitors from a system-based perspective. Uh, as well as a business-based perspective. Uh, since we have many different types of uh, connectivity technologies within our product, uh, you can certainly reach out into these other disparate databases and bring that data back to you, uh, present it as business intelligence within the console. So uh, from a system-based perspective, uh, I have an anomaly and maybe uh, my hardware uh, target uh, data store went down, my LAN went down, I can't make connectivity into that environment. Well, these monitors will go ahead and generate an alert and those alerts will be sent via email, could be a text page to uh, someone's cell phone like the system administrator, letting those individuals know or a group of individuals uh, that this anomaly has occurred and they have been engaged for potential support. So those are the two components that make up the uh, Scribe Insight Umbrella product. Now, uh, installing Scribe Insight on your application server or dedicated server, uh, there are many different types of connectivity technologies available out of the box with the product. Uh, we classify those under two uh, scenarios, one as application adapters, as you can see at the far left there, and the one to its right, connectivity adapters. Now the connectivity adapters would be those ODBC drivers that would allow you to connect into, let's say, MySQL, a Fox Pro database, uh, XLS spreadsheet, a CSV file, a whole host of opportunities to embrace those other data stores and include those uh, into your migration and or integration strategies. Now application adapters, on the other hand, are those adapters that Scribe Software has developed, which uh, really leverages the API of those supported applications. Uh, the API, obviously the application uh, programming interface, does have intelligence in it such that it defines the business rules with regards to how data can move into those target applications. Uh, that would be no different than if you were sitting in the user interface of, let's say, a Dynamics AX. Uh, the rules and logic that you are bound to within that application 
are the same rules and logic that we are bound to via our adapter that connects into that environment. So what does that mean to you? Well, that means that the, the level of the data, the integrity of that data that you're moving forward into your Dynamics AX application is going to be at the highest level because we abide by those business rules. Now, uh, as in addition to uh, those application adapters that I had just spoke to you about for some of those enterprise applications, and I'll show you a little bit more about the domain that we live in with regards to connectivity, but we also offer another adapter that uh, allows you to uh, embrace uh, a web store that you may have uh, out on the internet or some, some form of a web portal. SOAP-based uh, web service that we can certainly uh, connect into and expose those methods and parameters uh, so as to be able to data map to those just as well. So I really got you covered from an on-premise uh, perspective as well as a hosted and in the cloud. Now our focus today in this presentation uh, will be uh, we'll be using lists files that we will drop into a, uh, a directory on the network. That directory is being monitored by our Scribe Insight application, a file-based integration process. And when that file arrives into that folder, we will sense its arrival, we'll pick it up and then process it, and we'll move that data directly into Dynamics AX. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the way the, the first part of the process with regards to this presentation today. As you can see here, uh, we'll begin with a list file, and we're going to be using a CSV file uh, to capture that data. In this case, we're going to be uh, bringing in inventory items that uh, it may be from another database that you have internally that you would like now to incorporate that data, or on some form of a frequency. You know, uh, every week uh, I need to go out and grab the latest and greatest uh, products and bring those into my AX application. So we're going to be using a CSV file as an example of how that would be uh, passed over to Scribe Insight. Well, we'll pick it up, process it, and then bring that into AX so that you now can include those into your sales orders. Uh, as you can see in the center of block there, uh, the tables that we will be touching within the uh, AX application, again, through the API of the uh, Dynamics AX, uh, will be the event table, uh, event table module, as well as the event item location. These are standard entities within your AX deployment. Uh, also, we certainly support any custom entities and fields that you may um, uh, modify or add to your AX deployment. So that would be the first phase of this presentation that I'll share with you today. Now the second phase, as you can see here, uh, we'll be dealing with a web services connection. We'll be going to go out to the internet to a public site that we can download the latest and greatest exchange rate data so that we now can include that into our AX deployment so that when we're creating sales orders, we know that we have the latest and greatest uh, uh, data with regards to currency conversion. Now if we look at this from a high level, you can see here, this is how it all comes together. We've got two forms of uh, integration here. We've got data migration at the bottom, as you can see from the list file source going directly into Dynamics AX. And then a data synchronization from a web service portal out there across the internet, uh, bringing that data in uh, and including that into your AX deployment. Again, what you're seeing here, all this functionality can be uh, uh, integrated, can be uh, launched transparently to the users. You set it up and you forget it. It goes off and it does its thing. Uh, I can set the web service portal currency exchange uh, process here to you know, run at uh, 4 p.m. each day so that the next day I have the latest uh, currency. Alright, so that's the demonstration. It's a little set up with regards to how we're going to um, go forward during this demonstration. So let me go ahead and uh, go out into the demonstration. I'll bring up my uh, image. And uh, we'll start here by taking a look at the, uh, the inventory page in Dynamics AX. As you can see here, I've already got items uh, listed here. Now, let, let me go back and just show you one thing before we um, we go any further. Actually, I'll go ahead and sort this. I'm going to sort on underscore SD, and I'll explain why I'm doing that in a moment. But we're just going to do a search for anything that has underscore SD in it. And as you can see, it comes back and there's nothing within that uh, window. However, if we, um, if we now go into our 
our file system here, uh, this is going to emulate that process that you may have automated with your environment where it's going to go out. Uh, you, you've got a, um, a process such that as new products become available, uh, you've got a routine that dynamically picks that data up, pumps it out as a CSV file, drops it in the folder where it's now uh, passed over to Scribe Insight and we go ahead and process it at that point. So what we're going to be using is this CSV file as I had uh, shared with you earlier. And you can see here on the left side of your screen, we've got it called here products.csv. I'm going to quickly open this up so you can see what it looks like. Uh, typical CSV file, the very top line that you see there is the column information, item uh, number, item name, search name, etc. Uh, and then each subsequent uh, row underneath is the, the uh, row data that would be associated to that column information. So you can see the first uh, record there, A217B underscore SD, it's a laser printer. Uh, subsequently, as you go down that list, you can see uh, every one of those item numbers does end in an underscore SD. So that's the, the point that I was trying to make before, is that uh, the underscore SD items are not currently within our AX deployment, but we're going to go ahead and capture this file uh, automatically and now include that into our item list within Dynamics AX. So let me go ahead and close this down. And what I'm going to do here now is uh, we're just going to copy this products.csv file. And this could basically emulate that automated process that I was uh, sharing with you earlier, where it gets populated out, drops into a folder, we pick it up and process it. Uh, the folder at the top right there, I got it called, it's called uh, the incoming directory. So basically, this is the folder that we're monitoring. Uh, what's going to happen? I'm going to paste it into that top uh, right window and then within the five second polling interval it will then be captured and it will be dropped down into the lower right hand corner uh, window which is the working directory. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to go ahead and right click here, paste it. You'll see within five seconds that that should be picked up. Drops down at the bottom as you can see and when it disappears I know that that file has been processed and that data is now within my uh, AX deployment. As you can see, it disappeared. So let's go back down into uh, AX and let's take a look at our new products. Uh, once again, we still got the filter there, underscore SD. I'm just going to hit my refresh key. And now you can see on the screen, there's every, uh, every one of those items that we've captured from that CSV file. So we can scroll down and you can see the various um, entities here and here's one here, there's that laser printer that we had talked about earlier, that first record within that uh, CSV file. Here we can open up and we can take a look at the specifics with regards to it, uh, reference information about that, uh, if we have any um, other information. Every, every one of these fields is certainly mappable via our adapter uh, for Dynamics AX uh, and so you can populate any of these fields. Once again, you abide by the business rules and that data will go in smoothly within your AX deployment. Alright, now that your, your product is in there, uh, the other thing I wanted to share with you today, which is that second phase of this uh, demonstration, is how we can actually go out and grab that currency exchange rate. So at this point, since I have product, I can I can certainly go in and create a sales order. So we can go up here into uh, the sales order section and I can click on a new sales order. Let me just do one thing. I'm going to go ahead and close this for a moment. I just want to back up. I want to enlarge my screen here just a bit. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to choose a customer and let me just get out of here. Okay, so let me back out one more moment. I'm going to go ahead and enlarge it so you can see it just a bit better. Go, go into a full screen mode here. Alright, that should be a little bit better with regards to the, um, the XY axis there. Alright, so let's go back through that sales order process. So here we have the uh, Create Sales Order dialog and now we need to choose an account that we want to apply this sales order to. So I'm just going to go ahead and scroll here. I want to pick this three company, the very top one on the list here. We'll select that. It asks us if we want the uh, information, the uh, address information to come along with that. We say yes. So it goes and populates that whole screen for us. Basically we now we have this sales order in place. Uh, click on OK. And now you can see all that data that we currently have within the screen. Now down below here you can see we have an item number that's currently highlighted with the uh, little uh, red squiggles down at the bottom there indicate that we need a value in there. So here we're going to go ahead and click on item number. And as we scroll down the list you'll note here here's all your underscore SDs. So here's all your new items that we've just captured via that uh, CSV file. I'm going to choose the laser printer. It now fills everything in and now I have a, a, um, an order that I can certainly uh, run through my accounting system here in Dynamics AX. 
All right. Now, one thing I wanted to share with you as well is this notion of being able to grab uh, real-time data out on the internet and make that available within your deployment. In this case, it will be that currency exchange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here into General Ledger, and uh, down here at the bottom we have exchange rates. And if you'll note here, we have uh, five different exchange rates. We've got Canadian, we've got Danish uh, kroner, we've got Euro, British pound, and US dollars. When I click on US dollars, you can see down below here, it shows the exchange rate at 75.57. And at the very bottom of your screen down here, you can see that that is actually 75.57 British pounds for each $100. All right, so that's the current rate within our AX deployment. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring up another file here. I'm going to launch our Workbench application. Remember earlier I talked about the Workbench and the console. Well, I'm going to go ahead and launch the uh, Workbench, and I'm going to bring up a data map. And this data map is specific to that exchange rate where we're going to go out across the Internet via web services, pick that data up, and now bring it into our deployment here. So here's the data map, and as you can see, the top left portion of the workbench says the web services adapter getting into the uh, uh, exchange rate uh, website out there. And then on the top right, you can see uh, the target here is our Dynamics AX deployment. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and run this data map. And you can see we, that we've had one successful update into our deployment of Dynamics AX. Going to go ahead and close this. Let's now go back into AX and take a look at that exchange rate that you saw before, which was 57 uh, for the uh, US dollar. Let's go back into exchange rate, click on USD, and you now can see here it is 55.57. I believe it was maybe it was 75 before, but here you can see that we now have updated that rate so that anytime that I'm creating a new sales order, I do have the latest and greatest data. Okay. Let me uh, go ahead and close this down. And let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation. Now what you're looking at here is our adaptability slide with reference to the connectivity options that we have available via Scribe Insight. Uh, starting at about 11 o'clock on the screen there, we've got native uh, connectivity into uh, SQL Server as well as Oracle. So if you have databases currently in-house, uh, you could certainly leverage our adapters that come out of the box uh, available to you that you can connect into these environments and then source that data into wherever you need to um, uh, place it. Uh, about 1 o'clock, Microsoft Outlook adapter that Scribe has built, that's also available to you out of the box. Some of the enterprise applications, CRM applications such as Salesforce and Sage, Sage uh, Sales Logics, uh, these are optional adapters that um, Scribe Software has created and made available to our customer base. Sage also provides a contact management system called ACT. Uh, out of the box you also get an ACT adapter in addition to a Goldmine adapter. So if you have those contact management systems in-house, you can certainly leverage that as well and include that into your um, uh, migration and integration strategy. Uh, so going around about uh, 5 o'clock, you can see uh, via ODBC Connectivities, these are some of the applications uh, that we can connect into and uh, include those uh, within our, our data integration requirements. Uh, we talked about web services. Uh, as you can see there, a, a SOAP-based XML type web service uh, we can connect into. Uh, about 8 o'clock on the left side there, XML. Uh, if you need to publish or consume XML, we do have an adapter within our product that's available to you as well. Uh, and then finishing off at 9 o'clock, you can see the uh, Microsoft Dynamics family of adapters that, that we have available. And these are optional adapters as well. So this is kind of our universe, our adaptability universe with regards to connectivity into these various disparate applications. Okay, well, I want to thank you very much for your time today. I hope this has been of value to you. Uh, if you do come up with any questions based on what you've seen, uh, certainly don't hesitate to reach out to us. As you can see, uh, we have a, uh, an email address there that you can certainly send your questions to. Uh, we monitor that. Uh, our website, as you can see there, scribesoftware.com. Reach out to that, and uh, there's certainly a lot of great data there with regards to white papers, uh, uh, testimonials, uh, however, if you want to speak with someone live, uh, there's our phone number, area co code 603-622-5109. So thank you once again, and have yourself a great day.